Welcome to the Mortgage Mum podcast with me, Sarah Tucker, founder of The Mortgage Mum, where we believe mortgages are about more than just money. Join us every week where we will share with you bite-sized tips, interviews with inspiring people inside and outside of our industry, and tools to help you achieve balance in every area of your life. And a huge welcome to episode 13 of the Mortgage Mum podcast, where today we're going to be talking about mortgages for the self-employed. Do you own your own business? Are you self-employed? And are you wondering how it works for you so that you can maximise on your mortgage, fully understand what it is that we're looking for from you, and find out what the lenders are thinking when it comes to your accounts? listen in. I hope this as ever is going to give you the basis of your education when it comes to mortgages when you're self-employed. Lots of people get worried about it. Lots of people think it's a special type of mortgage. Um, I'm here to try and break down those myths so you can relax. You can get a mortgage when you're self-employed. You just need to be organised and educated. So I hope this episode is going to be really useful for you. Okay, so you're self-employed and you're wondering, how do you get a mortgage when you're self-employed? Maybe you're looking to remortgage, maybe you're looking to buy your first place, or maybe you're looking to move home, but you own your own business, you're self-employed and you're wondering, oh, how much can I borrow? How does it work? What do I need to know? So first of all, first thing I want to get rid of is the idea that there's mortgages for the self-employed and that that is its own category, if you like, of mortgage. Your mortgage when you're self-employed is the same mortgage as when you're employed. It's just how you're proving your income is different. So that's the first thing I want you to know. It is not a special self-employed mortgage. Some people market it like that, and that's just a clever marketing tool. Um, But it is a normal mortgage. It's just how you prove your affordability. And that is what we're going to talk about in this episode in a bit more detail. So first of all, I want to say congratulations, because if you own your own company, I know firsthand how brave and bold and courageous that is. And I truly hope your company is going well and thriving. And especially in 2020, I know it's been difficult for lots of businesses out there and lots of business owners. So a huge congratulations for making it through one of the toughest years in business. And if you're one of the lucky few businesses that have thrived from 2020, then a huge congratulations to you. I think it's important that we start there because owning your own business, being self-employed, you've taken a leap of faith You don't have the security that our employed friends have and you do um, give up, you you get a lot of freedom, but you give up something too in order to chase something that you feel passionate about. And I have huge respect to anybody that does that. So I wanted to get that out there first. Now, how do you prove your income? Um, It depends how you're self-employed. There's various different ways of being self-employed. So you could be a sole trader. You could be a director of a limited company. You could be in a partnership. Um, There's various ways of being self-employed. You could be a contractor. Um, But in general, I'm going to put it down to sole trader and limited company for the purposes of of this episode. But um, any questions that you have about your own individual situation, it's always best to talk to us anyway firsthand. So first of all, sole trader. If you are a sole trader, how do we look at your income? So the first thing we do is we ask you for two years worth of accounts or three years if you have it. Now, if you've only got one year worth of accounts, there are some lenders that will look at that. So do speak to us. Don't just wait another year. If you're ready to move or you're ready to remortgage or you're ready to buy your first place and you've only got the one year, do speak to us. We will tell you if it's going to be possible based on that one year because the criteria around that changes all the time. But there are lenders who will look at one year's worth of accounts. Generally, we're going to ask you for two up front. So let's assume you've got two years worth of accounts and we're going to ask you for your tax year overview document and your tax year calculation. 
Previously, this was known as, as an SA302, and some accountants do still refer to it in this way. Um, but we will ask you for those documents, so either an SA302 or your taxi overview and taxi calculations. And those documents are essentially telling us what you've submitted to HMRC. It will show us the gross figure and it will show us the net figure and the amount of tax that you've paid and how that was calculated. And from there, we will derive an income. So if you've given us two years worth of accounts and um, they are both exactly the same, then we will add them together and divide them by two, and that will give us an average of the two. And that is what we use for your income figure. There are some lenders who will use your latest year. So if you've had a particularly great year, they will sometimes use that figure above the average. But if it's a humongous jump, there are lots of questions we need to answer and we need to make that picture um, make the lender comfortable with that picture in order for them to use it all. So I wouldn't say we can guarantee it, but there are some lenders that will do it and we will do everything in our power to present that in a way that makes the lender as happy and as comfortable as possible to lend you the money that you're looking for. Now, if your latest year's worth of accounts is lower than the previous year, unfortunately, we won't use an average in those circumstances and the lender will insist that we use the latest year's figure. So do bear that in mind with the timing of your accounts. If you know that your latest year hasn't been a great one, you may need to think about waiting another year. Um, so just take that into account. And with that, I want to just raise the awareness to the main issue that we come across with the self-employed applicants that we deal with. And that is what they process on their accounts isn't always what they earn. And whilst they've been tax efficient and whilst they may have had lots of expenses, they may have bought a van, they may have bought, you know, equipment. Um, I'm not saying they're trying to dodge the tax man, but you can't have your cake and eat it. If you're going to lower your tax bill, you are also going to lower the affordability on a mortgage or any kind of credit for that matter. So you have to pick wisely. You have to choose your lane and stay in it. If you want to borrow more on your mortgage or you're looking to move house and buy a big, beautiful place and you know you need as much income as possible, you may need to sacrifice putting all of those expenses through, for example, um, or you may need to sacrifice having a lower tax bill for the few years leading up to that because you can't have both. So just bear that in mind because that's the main issue that people come across is they say, yeah, but I earn a hundred grand and we're like, yeah, but you've put down 25 and 25 is all we can use. And just like when you're employed, we will times that by whatever the income multiple is of that lender. So if they lend you four and a half times your income, it will be 25 grand times four and a half, 125 grand. If, um, if it's five times income, then obviously it'll be more than that. So oh, I think I just did that whole calculation wrong. <laughs> five times income is 125 grand. Anyway, you get my gist. Um, the point is, make sure you're thinking ahead. Make sure you're not being one of those people that say, I earn this much, but I declare this much. Can you base it on my earnings? No, we can't. We have to base it on what you declare. Now, there is a bit of a sticky point in between that if you are a director of a limited company, which I'll come on to shortly. Um, and that is if you retain net profit in your business and you're drawing your salary and your dividends, but you're not taking all of the profit out of the business. And I'll come on to that in a moment. So for your sole traders out there, you need to look at what you're declaring on your accounts. You need to um, speak to your accountant and make sure that it's reflective of how much you are actually earning. And I would advise you to think ahead. So if you're thinking, oh, it's fine, I'm not moving this year, so it's good, I'll just put my accounts in. I want you to think about what's going to happen in the next two years in the next five years so that you're preparing way in advance. So my remortgage is coming up in 2022. So I've been aware of that for the last few years and I'll make, I will make sure that my accounts reflect my earnings in the two years leading up to that remortgage. And because of the timing, that's actually started last year. So that's your sole traders. 
Now, you've also got directors of limited companies. And if you have a shareholding in a limited company that's over 25%, even if you are employed, you will be classed as self-employed most of the time. So just bear that in mind. And then it will come down to your salary that you draw from the business and, of course, your dividends. So for those of you out there who don't own a limited company and who aren't aware of this, when you own a limited company, you generally will pick a salary or you'll be given a salary. And a lot of people put their salary as just below the national, just around the national insurance threshold. So it's usually around eight or nine thousand pounds a year that people do as their salary and they draw the rest of their income from dividends. And that's generally the pattern that we see. Now, we can traditionally use salary and dividends for the last two years. Again, we're going to take an average of that to derive whatever your annual income is going to be. Um, that is taken from your accounts. So we we like to see the full set of accounts, but also from your SA302 or tax year overview and tax year calculations document, because from there we can see how much you've declared and paid tax on, and that's the figure we'll use. Now, there are some circumstances, as I touched on a moment ago, where you retain profit in your business, which is a very good decision business-wise to do because you're investing back into your company. And in those circumstances, we would try to look for a lender who will take into account your salary plus your share of the net profit for that year. And again, if it's over two years, we take an average. And there are high street lenders out there that will do it that way round, HSBC being one of them, um, Virgin being another, but there are quite a few. So do um, speak to a broker because they're going to advise you as to who's going to be the best lender, depending on how your income and accounts look. Again, it's about thinking ahead. Again, it's about talking to us well in advance. We have lots of clients who are self-employed who we speak to probably a year before we actually help them. And we don't mind at all. Any broker um, any broker shouldn't mind because that's what we're here for. We're here for the short term and we're here for the long term. Generally, mortgages are long term. So we're here for the whole journey with you. So do speak to a broker, even if you're not going to get a mortgage for the next year, just so that you are clear and it's in line with your goals and your vision for yourself. If you're thinking of moving, you want to make sure that your broker is letting you know this is ideally how much you need to be bringing into your company and earning to be able to get the kind of property that you're looking for. So that is um, directors of limited companies. And again, it will depend on what you're declaring on your accounts. Um, and it's all about being organised. It's all about being educated. Um, obviously, with this year, with the coronavirus, there has been quite a lot of grants for the self-employed. So we've had the bounce back loans um, and we've also had the C-bills loans um, going out to companies. Now, they do want to see more information than they used to. So recently, we've noticed lenders asking for business bank accounts for the last three or six months so that they can see and check that your business is still performing well, even through the coronavirus or since. If you've taken a bounce back loan or a seed bills loan, they may ask questions surrounding that, how it's been used um, and how the business is doing. Ultimately, you have to see it from their point of view. They're looking for security, that you can afford this mortgage, that your business is safe. And they will look online on your website. So we've had clients before who have told us our business is doing great. We're carrying on as normal. It hasn't changed at all. We are working through the coronavirus and we've checked and the lender has checked your website and those people have put blatantly on their website, this is closed due to the coronavirus. Business is not resuming as normal. And of course, that doesn't match up. So yeah, you've got to be aware that we are doing this to make sure you can afford it and we're on your side um, and so are the lenders. We're just trying to make sure they lend responsibly. So do make sure you're telling us everything. Tell us the full picture. As I've said in previous episodes, the more honest you can be with your broker, the more you can trust them, the better, because then they're going to be able to help you in the best possible way. So that is my main tips really for the self-employed. Um, obviously, if your business has been affected then do speak to us. Um, don't don't just assume that we can't help you because with any client, we'll always try and send you away with valuable information that means that you can 
If you can't get a mortgage now, you can work towards it. And it's always good to have a goal. It's always good to have something to work towards. So if your business has struggled, please don't let it put you off speaking to a broker. There's no shame. We are here for you. There's no judgment. Um, We've all been in this together and we're all here to support you basically. Now, the other thing I want to mention in regards to those of you who are self-employed is business protection. And we talk a lot about business protection when you're a client of the Mortgage Mum because I think it's an area that hasn't really been talked about too much. I think um, people assume it's very expensive and too expensive for them, but you have to ask yourself these questions. If you're a business owner and, for example, there's more than one of you running this business, there's more than one shareholder, You need to ask each other and have a critical conversation about what this looks like if something happens to one of you. And there are key people in businesses that where the business would really struggle if they weren't in it, working on it. And if those people get diagnosed with an illness or, um, God forbid, they pass away, you need to have a strategy in place for your business to make sure it can still carry on even if you can't or even if one of your shareholders can't. So I would really encourage you to have that conversation. It's awful, it's uncomfortable, but you know what? The best business partnerships are run with critical conversations happening all the time. They have to happen. It's important and it's about security. So there's key person... um, key man cover, key person's insurance. And that is, as it sounds, you're insuring a key person in your business that that person, if they weren't here, it's going to have a money impact on the business. And this insurance will basically pay out what you believe that impact is going to have so that you can carry on whilst they hopefully get better. Um, You've also got shareholder um, insurance and that is really useful. Again, so for the mortgage mum, Um, when we've looked at it, it's having those conversations with your partners. If something happens to me, would my husband want to run the mortgage mum? Would he rather get paid whatever my share is worth? And the answer he came up with is actually that he wouldn't want to run the mortgage mum. And he wouldn't be the best person to, with all due respect to him. Um, It it wouldn't be the same. And so we've had to have those critical conversations about who would be best place, how would it be best place, and how I protect my family in those situations as well. And they're not nice conversations, but you do feel better for it. Now, that is just me touching on business protection. There's so much more that you can do. You can also insure yourself through your business, and it's a business expense. You can also give your staff benefits, um, such as private medical insurance or life insurance through the business. We have a department who are exceptional at this and they really know their stuff and I it's so much more it's so much more complicated than I'm making it sound but the principle is simple you are protecting your business and the people in it and you're protecting your family on the other side so I'm going to do a whole episode on protection in general but I just think for the self-employed out there I really wanted you to be reminded that if you haven't looked at that for your business or even thought about it let us know it's not as expensive as people think it really isn't so um, do let us know but if you're self-employed keep going Um, If you're a contractor, I'll be doing a whole episode on contractors in the future. So keep your eyes out for that or your ears out for that. Um, And thank you so much for all the support for the podcast and the Mortgage Mum. We really appreciate it. We can't wait to help you with your mortgage soon. I hope your business is thriving. And if it's not, I hope things get better in 2021. Thank you so much for listening to the Mortgage Mum podcast. And I hope you learned something new today and felt inspired in some way. Here at The Mortgage Mum, we really believe in people supporting people. So if you've enjoyed this episode of The Mortgage Mum podcast, please share and subscribe and rate and review this podcast. And let's keep supporting each other. And of course, if you would like help with your mortgage or your insurance, head over to www.themortgagemum.co.uk or contact any one of the team on social media. We would love to help you. Thank you for listening.